Hi, how's it going? My name's Shadi Hassan, uh, not Curtis Imerl, who's originally billed for this talk. He's on a plane right now. So instead, I'm going to be telling you about our work on community cellular networks. Uh, this is joint work with a bunch of great collaborators. Uh, some of whom pictured here, Curtis, Kash Fali, Kate Harrison, and our advisors, Eric Brewer, Tappan Parikh, and Anant Sahai. Uh, myself, I'm a fourth year PhD student in the technology and infrastructure for Emerging Regions Group, uh, working with Eric Brewer. So what exactly do we work on? Um, basically, we build cellular network infrastructure for people in places who live outside of coverage. These are typically people in rural areas, and there are a lot of reasons why they don't have coverage. But they all basically boil down to traditional telco business models and equipment not being well suited for operation in these areas. And by our estimates, depending on who you talk to, there's about half, half, a, half a billion to a billion plus people who live in this category. So when you think about cellular network infrastructure, you're probably imagining a big rack of equipment uh, like pictured here, uh, inside a building with a diesel generator outside, a fence around it, uh, maybe a big 50-foot metal tower. But what we work on looks totally different. It's a box strapped to a tree. Any one of you all in the room could set this up yourself. And the reason for this is basically Moore's Law in action. Over the, you know, five years ago, if you wanted to set up a rural cellular base station, you're spending half a million dollars uh, just for, you know, CapEx. Now it's down to under $10,000. Similarly, power consumption is dropped by orders of magnitude. And what this has done is put building cellular networks in the range of being accessible for individuals in rural communities. Uh, this is a real game changer. So that's what our work explores, and we do this in three ways. First, we build technology to enable people to build community cellular networks. Uh, second, we think about the policy frameworks necessary to support the growth and uh, proliferation of community cellular networks. And lastly, we uh, think about the social implications of community cellular networks, and we study this through real-world deployments of what we've built. Uh, so one of the first things we did is we built this technology called virtual coverage. Um, basically, this is a way to intelligently turn on and off different components of the a cellular base station based on the actual usage of the network. And this reduces your power consumption, especially at night, by as much as 50 to 75%, uh, which is really critical when you're deploying cell phone infrastructure in areas without reliable power, uh, like many of the places we work. We've also made uh, community cellular networks fully programmable. Uh, you no longer can have to think about a cell phone network as this opaque black box that you can't do anything with. You can build SMS apps on top of cell phone networks, come up with your own numbering and naming schemes, really customize it to fit the needs of the community that you're trying to serve. On the policy side, we've developed a tool called Nomadic GSM, which is basically a way to sh uh, for community cellular networks to share and reuse spectrum with incumbent cellular network operators uh, without interfering with those operators and at the same time not without requiring community cellular network operators to spend millions of dollars in spectrum licenses, because that's clearly impractical. So the most fun part of this uh, work is we get to go actually deploy what we built in real places. Uh, we first did this uh, in 2011, 2012 at Burning Man. Uh, we went and built a full-on telco for the uh, community there. Had a lot of fun, and we also learned a lot from it, which allowed us to go build the world's first, you know, real operational community cellular network in Papua, Indonesia uh, at the end of uh, 2012. Uh, and this is, this is not just, you know, some one-off research uh, pilot. Uh, this is a full-on micro-telco. Uh, it's been operating for the past year. And, um, yeah, and our virtual coverage technology turned out to be really important here because the place we deployed had no power. It's running off of solar panels right now. Uh, and it's turned out to be, this, this model's turned out to be far more successful than, than we ever anticipated. Uh, the community we deployed in in Papua has about 1,500 people, uh, and it's four hours drive from the nearest town with cell phone coverage. Uh, yet, collectively, since we started operating a year ago this week, uh, that community has sent and received over 250,000 text messages. It's become a core piece of the communication infrastructure for this community. Uh, and more than that, it's actually a um, sustainable business. It's run by the primary school in the community, uh, and they're generating about, right now about $400 a month in profit, which is being used to support their ongoing educational efforts. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on with community cellular networks. I'm happy to talk to you more about it. You can shoot me an email or find me afterwards if you want to talk more. Thanks.